Hi there everybody and welcome to a special tutorial video I'm going to do for you guys today. Since my final character review video I've decided to start doing some more of how I design my character videos, sort of like the ones I did in the in the past except just a little bit more uh, cleaned up and more professionally done as I've really perfected my method of doing this. So today I'm going to show you guys my entire process of how I do a character now. I just spent the last hour and a half designing uh, or redesigning the character Betty. Since I really, since her design has not been uh, edited since I first designed uh, the second uh, phase of my show, so almost every single one of my characters is actually in their third design or second design. The only ones that were still in second design that have stayed that way are well it was Betty Devin and I think Xavier are the only ones that have hit the second design phase and have stayed that way everybody else has hit their third uh, I, I think uh, Jesse Gill is also the only one that's in his second design phase and he's probably my best design that I've done so far so I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I do how I my whole process so first thing I'm gonna do is I need to get my drawing that I did of Betty in here. So how am I going to do that? Well, I got my my wireless printer over here. It's a scanner as well, and I have my Mac. So I'm going to go to Image Capture. And has no. Okay, it's going to start scanning now. It might be upside down. I don't know. It takes a little bit of time to warm up, but I just want to show you guys exactly how I do this. So the process is going to be here is I'm going to scan the picture in, which is going to happen right now. So there's a second design of Betty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the area I want to capture right here. And then I'm going to want to just take it to the desktop. And then I'm going to name it the, what I want it to be. So it's Betty uh, number three, because that's the third design I've done of her. It's going to be black and white. And the DPI is going to be 600 DPI. That's uh, dots per inch or, or they docs, dots per inch or whatever. Uh, custom size already got that, and everything else doesn't really matter. It was only really matter was just we're gonna scan it. It's probably gonna take it a little bit here, just because it's gotta scan it again. I could just easily just screen cap and get it over with really fast, but I'd rather scan it with the 600 DPI. And as soon as it's done scanning, we'll go into Adobe Illustrator, and we will start working. If you guys want to get Adobe Illustrator, it's what I use. You can use every other things like Flash or Harmony. Uh, I recently just did the build for Jesse Gill and Harmony and it actually turned out pretty well. So we've got our scan here, it's on our desktop. So I'm just going to go into here and we're going to go to place. And it's going to take us right to the desktop I think. Yep, so we just got to find Betty in here. Where's Betty? Right there, mister. So we're going to place it. And it's going to be really big. The reason why it's really big is because it's a really high res image. Which is really good, it's what we want. We want to make sure that we're working with the best we can possibly get. So I'm just going to shift alt this down to size. In there. Now it's in our thing. It's in our thing. So we're just going to lock that layer because we don't want to edit our image even though we can't edit it in Illustrator unless you go to like the pencil tool or something. But usually the images are hard to edit in Illustrator and that's why I use it. So I'm going to make two layers. And what these layers do is one of them is going to be our actual our layer to color on, one is going to be our guide. So this green one, going to make it our guide. So let's call it guide. And you want to make this layer just so you can sort of guide yourself along the process of doing this. And this one's going to be a regular layer, and we're going to call this one image. Just because I don't like the I don't like to name my what I'm going to be drawing on. I, I just got a pet peeve about that. I don't know why. I just don't do it. So what we're going to do here in this phase is we're going to map out which areas are going to have lines intercept. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go from here to here. And this might seem really easy, but it takes a little bit of time. So what I'm doing is I'm actually clicking and holding. Click, hold, drag, and then I start making my character. Boom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on it and go make guide. So when I start edit, so when I start actually coloring it, I'm going to be use this as like a guide. So when I make this line here to this line here, I'm going to know it's going to connect to this face line properly because the face line is going to match this line exactly, which is sort of what we're looking for. And since we have a bunch of things uh, intercepting, I'm going to have to make a bunch of guides. So just to make sure everything runs smooth, I'm going to click down here. I'm going to click right around here. 
and then I'm going to sort of try and stay more so on the white. Just outline the white, and then I'm going to click down here. Don't worry, I'll fix that problem later. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the handle on here, and I'm going, oh, I broke it. I don't want to do that because I want this to stay like a smooth curve. So I'm just going to take this and sort of start bending it around. And if I can't get it to go properly, I might have messed up, but I can still just adjust. This is probably a bunch of adjusting or readjusting, so you're going to have to get used to doing that. I might have needed probably one more line. I might have to do that. Let's say I can get this to work properly, but I have one more trick on my sleeve if it doesn't want to work properly. So I'm going to have to put one more trick on my sleeve. I'm going to have to make this curve. No big deal. So I'm just going to have to align that with there. Align that with there. So that's all lined up. But as we know, it's starting to mess up the other line here. So we just got to shorten it down to what we want. There we go. We're starting to get the shape I want here. And I'm going to have to just curve this one as well. It is no big deal. It's just getting us the shape we want out of the lines that we have so far. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit more of uh, some of my thoughts about Betty since I didn't really get a, get a good chance to cover most of her details. Now, most of you know with my Total Drama Mega All-Stars idea, I want to have a Duncan Gwen uh, storyline again in Mega All-Stars. But we have, I, I think this is a problem. We have this problem of everybody thinking that Gwen and Cameron are a couple. So that sort of that sort of has me a little bit peeved, but like I know people can make assumptions and everything, but I highly doubt that's a thing, just because I don't think Gwen is the type to go for Cameron, and I think she's a little bit out of his league, and that's just my opinion. Like I, it makes sense because if Cody didn't have a chance, I don't think Cameron would either, because you know out of all the guys that Gwen has dated, I think she would not go for per se a Cameron or a Cameron type. Of dude, even because Cody's already run down that road a billion times, it doesn't seem plausible to me. It doesn't seem real, but with Duncan, and, with Duncan and Gwen, that seemed real to me. So I'm gonna try and uh, basically do a like a a better job at trying to do that couple of Duncan and Gwen and Mega All Stars. But it's not gonna be for sure a thing. Like we're not gonna, you guys aren't gonna see a Gwen can return because. You know, just because Gwonkin is my just because Gwonkin is my favorite uh, shipping doesn't mean I'm gonna basically just do my best to put them back together. I want to actually have it make sense, and I want it to actually have something like Duncan and Courtney had. I want it to actually mean something and have sort of a uh, a story to it. But anyways, going back to the whole Cameron thing, I was thinking that for a love interest we could give him Betty. But that's that's just an idea. That's nothing set in stone. I think Betty would be a great love interest for him because they're both sort of a little bit geeky and odd and everything. And I sort of I think it sort of makes sense. And because I think it was leading into the one hour special going into Mega All Stars, uh, I think it was I was gonna have Mike and Zoe be a team because it, I was gonna have like uh, I think it was gonna be called. Mega All Stars Revenge of the World type thing, kind of, sort of like a throwback to Total Drama World Tour. But with the Redonkulous Race, I was thinking of maybe having like a crossover between the Redonkulous Race and uh, Total Drama. And then Kristen Carter uh, would sort of be hosting against uh, Dawn or something like that. I also have a bunch of storylines planned out for it. And stuff like that, but nothing usually saw. It's just ideas that I've been throwing around in my head, just sort of give myself a, a idea of what I want that season to be. But since the Redonkulous Race came out, I've had this idea for this mega. Or since the Redonkulous Race came out, or before it did, I had this idea for like a Revenge of the World type thing, sort of like we had a. Uh, Revenge, uh, Revenge of the Island, we can have Revenge of the World. That was before the, the Redonkulous Race was made, so technically I sort of had an idea for a race around the world again, like the Redonkulous Race, but like I said before, Total Draw, our Fresh TV often beats me to my own ideas, which, eh, that's fine with me. As long as we're both thinking on the same page and everything, that's totally fine. I used to get quite annoyed by it, now that I think about it, it's actually a good thing, because if I'm thinking the same ideas they're thinking of and they're doing them before me, that must mean I'm on the same page as them, and I can totally do this. 
So, I was thinking that Mike and Zoe would be a team, but if Cameron's their awkward third wheel, and obviously if my season gets made, obviously Jenna and Gwen would be partners. Uh, who is Co who is uh, Cameron's partner going to be? I decided to uh, just basically out of nowhere throw Betty into this loop of uh, characters that could be a part of their gang because Betty is uh, an oddball herself a little bit. And I think she would go well with Cameron because they're both sort of nerdy and basically I think Betty sort of uh, sort of admires smarts over like anything else and Cameron's very smart. So that's sort of what her stick is. And just don't ignore me. I'm 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 really I'm I'm guiding stuff that I don't really need to guide because I'm trying to talk, but that's perfectly fine. And more guides you have, the more no, there's no harm in having too many guides. So I was thinking about maybe putting Betty with uh, Cameron, and I know some people might jump down my throat about that. Uh, I just messed this up. Oh no, did I not? It's fine. I'll keep it that way. But no, I wanted to put Betty with Cameron, f just to see how that would work. Like, I think it might be a good little little duo because they're both short characters, and you know, I don't I I have some short character couples, but I think it's just uh, I don't know it it kind of maybe gives Cameron a little more uh, more to do besides just hang out with uh, with Zo Mike and Zoe, which I think his character desperately needs. So give me a moment here. I gotta fix this. Oh shit, it's going nuts. It's going nuts. There we go. But yeah, I wanted to see how that that would work. And when I was writing them together, it seemed like it was pretty well because both of them are pretty smart and everything. And, you know, Cameron is the very, like, listeny type and Betty's the very talkative type, so they might actually go well together. But, you know, anything could really happen. It's just an idea I was floating around that I thought I'd shoot at you guys during this video. Hopefully this video isn't too long so I have to cut all this and then I'll just be talking to myself like a crazy person. But if it comes to that I might just shut up and fast forward a little bit. But you know, the more the merrier. This probably won't take me any more than 40 minutes hopefully. Uh, that's right, I didn't do the crotch line for her yet because I wasn't sure. Oh well. We will get there when we get there. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this line is because both of the legs are going to share this line, which is kind of important. So they're going to have, they're both going to have to line up with that line perfectly. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I got everything lined up here. That's going to intercept. Haven't got it done yet. This I got to do as well because the lines are touching it that aren't connected to the same line. And you guys will understand why I'm doing this before. If you guys haven't seen my other one, I did a one for my character from the Jesse Gill story, Trinity. Unfortunately, I ended up losing that file of her, so the only thing I have from her, from that build of her is that video, but any, I still got the JPEG of her saved and everything, so it's not a complete loss. So I'll take what I can get. Uh, boom, finish that off. And I'm just going to copy this hand over this one because this hand is way better done than this one over here. Alright, just got to make sure I got her my and the reason why I didn't curve the lines here is because I really want these to be straight. I thought I could make them rounded, but if I want to make them round, I can do it uh, after I'm done coloring it all in. And these lines here are going to be shaded different colors. And this is obviously really heavily based off Michelle Flaherty's hair from American Pie 2. I'm not sure about American Pie 1. The picture I was using her for is American Pie 2, so whatever. Oh, and I got to do her shoes still. That's probably fine. But no, I was thinking about maybe doing a Betty Cameron thing, which I think would work. I think that's a pretty awesome duo. They wouldn't have to be automatically in a romantic relationship. They could just be friends. But I think it gives Cameron a better female friend than Gwen, which sort of is really forced and doesn't really work. And usually I, you know what, I'm just going to copy this shoe here and make it the other shoe. I'm just going to take the shoe here, build it, and then put it over here. And I'll show you guys how to do that as well. Everything else here should be fine. And then let's just zoom out. There, that should do it. Alright, so that's done. I'm moving into the next step. So this step here is coloring. So usually when I start, I just start with whatever I want to start with. 
Uh, I usually would have a color palette to help me with this, but since I'm doing Betty from scratch, I might as well just ignore that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pupils first because eyes are a little bit tricky and most people, well, eyes are really hard to build. Let's going to put it that way. So let's just flip this around make her eyes black. And if I really want to get lazy, just take this, drag it over here. And this by both the eyes are the same shape. You've already got something better going on here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up this. This is going to be my thing. I'll make this bigger for you guys. Go to panel options. Go to large. Poof. Make it bigger. And we're not gonna, really going to focus on what over here, except when it comes to layering, which might be important when doing the eyes. So we got the black people, so now we're going to draw the frames of the glasses that we will see her eyes through. Now, like if we see her, the way Harold's glasses are designed, his eyes uh, are sheared over top of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my color palette. Uh, let me just get that open. How do I get it open? How do I get it? Where's my color palette? There it is. Don't worry, it's not going to be our glasses color. I just got to use it to get this open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Patent Tone Solid Coat. Oh, look, it's hidden underneath there. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is Harold has a sort of like a light tinge green to his glasses. So I'm just going to do that. And then what I'm going to do mm, this thinking really quick here. Gonna have to do this copy shift and V. So what I did was I just made a layer, same layer of it, made one. Gonna make this one white. And then I'm gonna do is copy group these together. So now they're gonna group the whites underneath. So now I'm gonna take this. And it's gonna go transparent. I'm gonna make it 10% transparent. Nope, not 10. Let's go 40. And now let's go 40 on this. So we sort of have an idea of what we want the pupil to look like. I'm not really feeling that look though. I'm just sort of experimenting right now because I haven't really done a Kyrgyz in a long time. So I might just do this. I know Harold sort of has uh, like a lightish green, but her face color is gonna... Well since that's there, I don't gonna do this anymore so I can make this zero again. Or I can make it uh, 100. There we go, we have more. So you know, nah, I really don't like that color. Let's go up to about 80. There we go. That's something a little bit I like. All right, so let's go to here. Now I know Harold. I know Harold are more of like a teal. So let's find a teal. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. That's what we want. See, perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to minimize this. So this is her one glasses or her one lens. We can say. So I'm just gonna go over here. We're just gonna go click. Click, 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 click. Then we're going to take this color and then we're going to Command C, Shift Command V to paste in place. I'm going to take this one, make it white, make it 100%, same color. Take this, put it on top, click, 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 click. Shift G, go into the group here, go into the group here. Oh, this is one group. We're going to hit the eyedropper tool. We're going to make the same color. Boom. Now we both have these same colored eyes. So what we're going to do is minimize this again. Go over to here. Click. 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 Going to make this black. I'm going to put it in under the group here. I'm going to put it inside. Oof, that looks really rough. Let's maybe thin these glasses out a little bit. And if I really want to, which I think I might just do, so I'm going to take this, give it a stroke, maybe darken the stroke color. They don't want to give me true black, so I'm going to have to go get it myself, which is sort of annoying. 100% black. There we go, really black, there we go. Dark. And these are both given a two stroke. And if I want, I could put it on the outside, which I think I might do. So I put it on the outside so we're not losing any gla eyeglass shape. And what we're going to do is take this, put it here. Take out the fill color by doing that. You guys can always just slow this down and play it for yourself to see what I'm doing. Just because I don't want to make this recording too long. Because if I sit here and explain everything, it's going to be really long. And that's not going to be fun for nobody. I'm going to make her glasses a little bit bigger just because I didn't predict that it would be that small if I did it that way. So I'm just going to increase them to about yay. I'm going to increase this to about 
EA big. A little bit bigger. Take this. I can make this fit this line perfectly. But no, I'm just going to go back and do what I was talking about before with the Cameron Betty thing. I really wanted to do a retelling or basically... Uh, I, I think the problem with Duncan and Gwen that everybody had a problem with was because there was no real emotional buildup to them getting together. It was sort of just like this subplot that... Or not really a subplot, more like this thing that Gwen was sort of dealing with that she sort of had feelings for Duncan. And it wasn't really that well explained. What color am I going to make this really moment? Give me a second here. Um, oh, glasses frames. I usually just look at Harold when I'm doing this, but I want to stay as original as possible. Oops, I selected. I selected. You know what? I'll leave that as the color for now. Oh, she was talking about but yes I wanted to do a retelling of Duncan and Gwen because I think the people the problem people had with them was the, the most was there was no emotional build up to them being together like Duncan and Gwen had or Duncan and Courtney sort of had this build up you know like this big climactic build up that was them like hating each other and then you know Courtney being on Duncan's case about everything and you know it's sort of like the, the, it was that well it was their build up was that right there but Duncan and Gwen didn't really have that. It was just sort of like shoehorned in because the writers needed to break up Duncan and Courtney for the for the uh, network executives' own uh, pleasure, whatever you want to call it, their own little agenda. And that's what sort of happened with them was they were sort of forced apart by network executives that wanted to prove to kids that the first girl you're like the first person you date is the person you'll end up being with forever. That it was sort of their stick. Oh crap, this is getting really bad looking. Uh, where's my color swatches? Oh, I'm just being retarded. But no, they wanted to prove that, and they just broke up Duncan. They just broke up Duncan according for that reason, but they didn't know how to do it proper. They don't know how to do it. Like, they didn't know how to make it sound believable, so they just sort of uh, shoehorned that breakup in like that, and they just threw Gwen and Duncan together. Which, in my opinion, is the right thing to do, is to put them together because, you know, those two have a lot in common and everything, and, you know, you can see that being a real couple. But it wasn't really that well executed according to uh, the fans. Like, it wasn't that well executed. And I can, I can agree. It wasn't that well executed. Even though I liked it, it wasn't that well executed. It could have been executed a lot better. But uh, they ended up having to do it that way, and you know, let the chips fall where they might, where they where they let the chips fall where they may. But I thought that was a, like the right move on their part was you know, this works. Like you know, people can get behind this. It's just there was no build up. Like if Duncan had returned like three episodes earlier, and Courtney had you know done something to him to make him break up with her, and then sort of throughout that time, Gwen is you know sort of his confidant for that breakup. Things might have turned out a little bit smoother, but they didn't do that. Um, I think it was like a last minute thing. They had their elimination order picked out and everything, and then they were just like, oh, let's just uh, break up. Don't, or I think it was they had their script and everything, their elimination order ready, but then the, oh, the, the call came in to, you know, break up Duncan and Gortney, or that was part of the script, and they had to do something to, you know, do that, and the only option they had was to basically do it like they did. But the problem they have there is they didn't they didn't build up anything like if, like I said if they had if they'd have if they'd have gotten that order and then say well if we're gonna do that we should probably change uh, when Duncan comes back so we can have some build up to this breakup because let's say Duncan comes back and Courtney's just bossing him around and basically he just gets fed up with it and but then he goes to Gwen to, to ask what to do it's sort of like in Gwen's own interest to. To like, at that point, it would be in Gwen's own emotional interest to have them break up because she wants to be with Duncan. But of course, it's also looking out for Duncan's best interest as well. And, you know, that, that, that could have been the build that they needed. But obviously, people would have had a problem with it either way. This hair is going to be a real pain in the ass to do because it has so many pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 pieces of hair. Oh, well, this is what I did. This is the hell I signed myself up for, so I might as well just get it over with. 
But no, like, like I said, if they would have executed like that, they might have got a little bit of a less bad response. Maybe. I don't know what the general response would have been. But the way they did it just made people angry. It made all the Courtney fans angry because no matter what happens to Courtney, Courtney fans get angry. Like, it never fails. Like, whenever something happens to Courtney, Courtney fans lose their shit. Like, they lose their banana sandwiches. They like, they go fucking ballistic nutsacks on everybody. Like, there is no pleasing those people. <laughs> there is no pleasing them. But no, like, but that's just because they're really passionate about their character and everything. But, you know, it's fine to be passionate with your character. But, you know, don't go so banana sandwich as soon as something bad happens to them. Because, you know, bad things happen to everybody. And you don't gotta lose your shit over Courtney getting puked on by sharks you know stop going banana sandwich and go a little bit less ham <laughs> but anyways uh but like i said it could have been done a different way i would have i would have done it the way i just said i would have said well if you're going to make us break them up we're going to have to do this and uh if the decision to uh uh put duncan and gwen together was made in the writing room they maybe should have just uh, changed the order in which Duncan came back to f set that up a little bit better. Like that's something I would have done as a producer. I would have said, "Well, if we're gonna do that, let's uh, maybe bring him back a little bit earlier, and then just change some scripts to ac like accommodate that change." Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to a stream right now as I'm doing this as well, so I'm like double distracted. <laughs> but, uh, no, I would have done it that way, just to avoid any, like, just to avoid any of that drama. Like, or I guess it's, like, I guess it's good for the show to have that drama, but if you know the fans are going to go banana sandwich over it, I guess they didn't know. Like, I don't think they knew that getting, puke, making Shark peek on Courtney would cause her fans to go banana sandwich. They really don't know that, but... Like, I, I would always prefer, prepare for the worst, because, like, with my show, I, pre I prepare for the worst. Like, with the Jesse Ghost story, I have a, an event in there that might make some fans go banana sandwich. Like, if, if there's some people who are really hardcore fans of the Jesse Ghost story, the one plot point might cause them to go banana sandwich, but I've set it up in a way that makes the audience, you know, okay with it, you know? It makes them say, wow, this really sucks the way it is. Maybe it should change. And then it happens, they're like, good. I'm happy I changed, you know, sort of like, uh, sort of like, uh, The Walking Dead. I always usually go to The Walking Dead because it's one of my favorite shows and I think it's really well written, but the one thing I like about The Walking Dead was the governor, the governor story, like the, 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 the villain as the governor. He was probably one of my favorite villains because you love to hate him, but you want him to be good. Like there's that point where you think he's good. Like, there's a point where you think he's changed and then he doesn't, but. I'm really losing track of what I'm trying to say here. Sorry, I just get sort of focused on stuff, but you know, but like I said, if, if they would have made Courtney more of a villain and made Duncan, you know, basically like du they, like Duncan's hand's been forced to, you know, break up with her, then it might have gone a little bit smoother because if Duncan had no other choice in his own mind than to dump her, he might, they might have been able to shoehorn the Duncan Gwen uh, relationship in there. With a or with a little bit more ease, like it could have been eased in a little bit better, and they would have made Gwen look like a, look like the good guy because you know she's coming to Duncan's rescue, which I think it's a little bit more of a Gwen thing to do. And the whole stupid Gwen Courtney friendship is just a big hook of crap in my opinion, anyways. And that was proven in All Stars. Like it, it just doesn't work because like no matter how you see it, Gwen walks out of All Stars the loser. Like, and it is, that, that's something I don't like. It's just, like, Gwen doesn't deserve that, neither does Duncan, because, you know, in my opinion, Duncan is, like, an anti-hero. Even though anti-heroes can be dicks, like, they can be jerks, but ultimately they fight for the good guys. And that's how anti-heroes work, and with Duncan, they sort of lost that, that touch with him because they had this stupid vision in their head of... You know, if we break up Duncan, if we break up Duncan and Gwen, everything will be okay again. <laughs> the fans won't hate us so much, but they just went and banana sandwiched it even more, and it just 
turned out worse. <laughs> but of course, that's just my opinion, guys. Like, I think All Stars was by far the worst season yet. Some people say Action was the worst season, but I concur. At least I actually had some, you know, actual good plot points in it, like you know the Justin thing and you know Courtney returning and all that. It had all those good plot points in it. It's just with Duncan and Gwen's. Uh, get together they sort of banana sandwiched it because they set them up for failure by having them get together in that fashion like if Duncan had broken up with Courtney and then Courtney was like oh maybe I shouldn't treat Duncan so bad or maybe D Courtney just like says okay well screw Duncan then you know single girl you know bring it on Alejandro like if that would have been her attitude going uh, attitude coming out of that relationship I think most fans would have been fine with Duncan and Gwen getting together because it's like wow Courtney really is a bitch like that's what they would have thought like wow Courtney is a real bitch I sort of want Duncan and Gwen to get together and team up against her to sort of take her down and then when Courtney Courtney takes out Gwen in that one in, in that episode it gives Duncan a reason to you know get revenge because he's like oh Courtney is ruining my life again because I'm actually happy with somebody else besides her and that would have been a great plot point but the way it was handled wasn't handled well and to physically hide their mishandling of it they broke them back up again causing even more problems in my opinion but that might just be because I'm a fan of Duncan and Gwen I think breaking them up was a huge mistake but I digress before I was a Duncan and Gwen fan I was a Courtney Duncan fan so I've walked your life Courtney Duncan fans I've been there <laughs> I've smelt the roses I've smelt them put them back and you know agreed that you know I like the Duncan and Gwen. I like the Duncan and Gwen flowers better. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I sort of concur. It's like you guys think I'm a big Duncan and Gwen, Duncan and Gwen fan, which I am, but I was at one point a Duncan Courtney fan. So you know, maybe don't give me so much shit when I say this sort of stuff. It's because I'm not looking at it as an objective. I'm looking at it as an, at an objective, an objective point of view, because oh, what did I just do there? Place to oh I'm in sort of sort of different menu whatever. And if you guys are wondering this face this this face here like this is this is how it looks. Just give me a moment. I should probably group these together before I get any further. Boop 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 group boop 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 group boop boop group. Put this on top there. Now it'll look proper whenever I do this. But like I was saying, uh, I was once a Duncan and, Duncan and Courtney fan, but when I saw Duncan and Gwen were getting together, I was like, whoa, what's this? Because uh, to be honest, I'll give you guys, I'll give you guys my honest reaction to Duncan and Gwen getting together. Uh, when I, I and this was me just watching Total Drama Action. Like I just I I, I had stopped watching Total Drama Action because I thought Duncan got eliminated when Gwen did actually. I thought Duncan had uh, decided to go in Gwen's place, and I was like sort of pissed off about that. I was like, oh, what the fuck? My favorite character's gone. And I was like, well, I guess I want Gwen to win now. And then I stopped watching because I thought like, oh, they're just gonna have you know they're just gonna have Gwen win, which I was totally fine with because if Gwen. Uh, was to stay in Duncan's place, or if Duncan was to actually even Gwen's place, at that point I would I would have wanted Gwen to have gone to the finale and won, which I was okay with. But I just didn't want to watch at that point because I was upset about it. So I stopped watching. I thought Duncan was gone. So I just like okay, whatever. I quit watching. And then I saw a commercial. It's like congrat. Is like in Canada. It was like congratulations, Duncan, on winning Total Drama Action. I was like what? So I flipped on the episode. It was like on there that day, and I was like oh shit, Duncan actually stayed. And he actually won. And then I saw him and Courtney were together. I was like, oh, Courtney was there too, I guess. So I didn't really catch that. But then when Total Drama World Tour came on, I watched the first episode and then it was just gone for a long time. I was like, well, what happened to Total Drama Action or Total Drama World Tour? It just sort of stopped airing in Canada because I don't know what they were doing. They were doing something weird there. But uh, they stopped airing it. And then I was at home one day and then uh, I forget what I was doing. I typed in Total Drama World Tour and then it was like, there was the thing, it was, I forget what it was, it was like Duncan and Gwen kiss and Total Drama World Tour, and I was like, what the fuck is this? 
So I turned it on, and I was like, I thought Duncan and Courtney were together, and then a sudden kiss, and I was like, oh, they must have broken up, and I realized, you know, I like this a lot better, and that was, that was my reaction. My honest reaction was that. I was like, I like this a lot better. This works a hell of a lot better, in my opinion. So I had I had that. I was like, okay, well, this is really good. I like this. And I started watching, and I started watching World Tour all the way up to that point. And I was like, wow, that built up really well, in my opinion. And then watching it now, it's like, wow, that built up pretty shitty. <laughs> but, you know, like, there was always that sort of uh, hint that Gwen really liked Duncan. And, you know, I think they were well together, and I really dislike Trent. Like, Trent is one of my disliked characters. And, uh, yeah. I'm not going to get into that too much. But, you know, I, I really don't like Trent. He ruined Gwen's chance to win Total Drama Action, in my opinion. He ruined it. Sorry, I'm just trying to find true black here in these eyebrows, because they don't look true black to me. Oh, well. But, no, like, if, if that would have been uh, told a little bit better, they could have avoided a bunch of stuff and, you know, been able to keep those two together. And that... Was pro it's probably one of the best couples in the show. Like, and I, I just think Gwen Marin is really, really awful. It is. Ugh. I cannot, I cannot express my disgust in that any, any further than I already have. But, moving on. So this is where I'm going to start doing the shirt here. I just, I just did the hair. I'm just going to keep it one uniform piece. These these black lines are just gonna serve as hairlines, but say I want to do something cool, like say I want to do this. Boom. Oh, whoops, I'm in the stroke option. But say I want to do this, I want to go make her hair multicolored like this. Now some of it's lighter, some of it's darker. Usually it's better to go lighter than darker, or darker than lighter. So put those back in and go darker. There, 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 and there. Darker. There we go. And this isn't going to be an actual shirt color. My my pen tool has just defaulted to having this as a default color, which is fine with me. But anyways, no, I wanted to give uh, Cameron a love interest or basically a female friend that matches his personality a little bit better than Gwen does. And I'm saying that all in the best of hearts. Like, I don't dislike Cameron. I was thinking about putting him in Mega All-Stars. I still am. The cast is not final for Mega All-Stars. I was thinking about putting Cameron in, but the way Cameron would have to leave would have to be in a way that you guys might not like. Just because of the way the villain is set up that season, he might have to get punted off in a really, you know, brutal kind of way like he was in All-Stars. And I really don't want to do that to that character because I don't want you to have you guys ram your... Uh, anger hammers down my throat and destroy me but if you guys want him back I'd have to do it that way because that's the way I, I that's the only way I could do it and honestly it's the only way I could think of doing it <laughs> and it would it would have to be a character that's a good guy that gets rid of him for it to work because ugh. The way Mega All Stars is set up is it's a it's a retelling of the Duncan and Gwen relationship, or it has that plotline in there, a retelling of it after All Stars, and you know the new hero Duncan is there and everything. So, and I don't mean like you new hero Duncan like oh he's on the heroes team he's a hero now like a real artard, like I've set him up in a way that when he interacts with a character from my cast. He realizes his hero potential, and I've done gone buggered this hard. How are you gonna do this now? Okay, I was gonna try and do this. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna let this roll. Let this roll. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let this play itself out. Hopefully, this thing just make, fixes itself around. But no, like, I, I don't want anybody getting mad at me for eliminating Cameron in a brutal way like he was in All-Stars. I wanted to, you know, if I was to put him in Mega All-Stars, he'd have to get eliminated. But the way, I would do, the way I'd have to do it would be, you know, not the most popular opinion or not the most popular way of doing it. People would want to have my head on a stick for doing it that way. But that's the only way I could think of doing it. Because I really want to have... I really want to have Cam there. It's just the way I'd have to get rid of him is a little bit ruiny for who the villain, who the hidden villain's gonna be. 
and it's a little bit ruiny for uh well i guess not for the hidden villain part because uh, i'm not going to spoil anything but uh, the way he'd have to go and make you guys really pissed i really don't want to have to run down that option damn it i got a problem here oh that's because these are set to inside set them to outside and pointed there we go shit Shit, 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 shit. <laughs> How am I going to fix this problem? Is it a problem? Let's turn off the guides. You know what? Let's just back out here for a moment. Put that there. Put that. Oh, this is in the way. There we go. But no, uh, the way I'd have to eliminate camera might not be the most popular way of doing it, but that's the way I'd have to do it for the sake of the story. And I would be willing to take that uh, that fall if it meant you guys wanted him back, but he would have to get eliminated in a certain way. That might not be the most popular way. But eh, even saying that he's going to be there and get eliminated doesn't mean he's going to win because obviously... I'm going to try and stick with the, the with the tradition that somebody who's won before can't win again. I'm going to try and stick to that principle uh, for as long as I can until it's run its course. Like, There's going to be a point where I'm going to want people that have been there twice to win again, which I think is something that should happen because in, in like Survivor, people who have won before have uh, won twice. Sandra is the only person to win Survivor twice. So having one contestant win twice is not the end of the world because it has been done before in reality TV. Which is the is it's the big point in there. It's been done before. That's the only thing sort of that's the only thing sort of going for it. It's, it's been done before. So I'd, I'd want to try that at least once with the Oska e cast and the Mega All Stars, but. Like I said, it's still up for debate of what I'm going to do as of right now. I'm going to try and, uh, I'm going to try and appease everybody with Mega All-Stars. I want this to be sort of like, if Osuke Island isn't like, I'm pretty sure Osuke Island's going to be the big return, but it might just be another great chapter in the show that gets put at like second to best just behind, uh, behind Island, which I'm okay with. I'd love for that. But I really want to uh, bring Toljama back to that former glory with it, that I achieved with uh, Island. And the only way I can think of doing that is to do it the way I've planned it out. But like I said, people in that might not like that because it's not the original cast. But there's still many options I can pursue. Like, Oske Island is supposed to be the one that brings it back type deal. And that's what I want to be seen as, but uh, it's still iffy if it's going to be seen like that. Give me a moment here, I just got to do this really quick. I'm just going to test something out here. This might actually look better or worse than I thought. I like it. Just so you guys can see what i got so far, don't mind me. It's just really hot in here and my mouth is dry. Usually when I work, I have my fan on, but if I'm doing an audio recording, it gets hot as balls in here. I'm just going to up this up uh, a stroke level just because it doesn't match the body that much. There we go. It's all one uniform stroke now. And like I said, this is a sort of like uh, a redesign, and if it doesn't work, I'll do another redesign. But this is just something I've come up with in the meantime. Just so I can do another video for you guys and sort of, you know, let you guys know what I've been up to and everything. Um, not to get off the topic I was talking about. What was I talking about? Uh-oh, I lost my train of thought. Not good. Oh, well. Um, but let's move on to the more recent news. I've done enough to talk about total drama. Let me know down below what, what you think about a Betty Cameron love interest. Or if you want them to just be friends, that's cool too. And like just so Cameron has another friend that isn't Mike and Zoe and isn't Gwen. Because I want to have Cameron be friends with people more of his type, you know. Like Duncan and Gwen were more of each, more, more, more of each other's style. 
And when they were together, I thought it made lots of sense. It's it really made lots of sense to me. But you know, let's see what we can do here. I want to do a Cameron Betty friendship. If you guys want to be a love interest, you can set that down below. You know, I want Cameron and Betty to be a love interest. That'd be awesome. Cool. Let me. Uh, if, if if that ends up being the thing, then sure, let's go for it. Because I'd I'd I'm happy to oblige. Um, you know, let's go more of a dawn feel here. I'm thinking brown for these things. Oh, not that. Stupid thing. She looks like a grandma. I was, when I was designing her, I was like, well, she looks like a grandma. <laughs> like the sweater and the hair and everything. She has, like, grandma hair and, like, the glasses and everything. But no, let, let me know down below what you think about a, uh... Cameron Betty friendship slash love interest type deal and uh, so on and so forth moving on to more recent news I, uh, I'm i doing a trailer for the Jesse Gill story the reason why I'm doing one for the Jesse Gill story and not told you I'm with Skate Island is because it makes more sense for me to promote my own show first than to basically try and shoehorn myself into a, pos a position to make Total Drama with Skate Island I really want to make it trust me I really do it's on my top priority list but for me as a professional, I need to prove to Fresh TV that I can do more than just, you know, total drama. I can do different things. And that's what this serves to prove is like, I can do different things. You know, I'm not just a one trick pony with total drama. You know, I can write different stuff. And that's what I'm sort of doing with the Jesse Gill story is, you know, setting up the my career as a writer. Because the just the Jesse Gill story is of my own creation, whereas oh I've already done buggered this. Damn. Okay, I'll fix this. In, I'll fix that later. But with the Jesse Gill story, it's going to help me solidify myself in the industry as a writer. Because if I can get the Jesse Gill story going and I can get my name out there as a writer, I can really have a good chance of getting a uh, total drama Oske Allen made. And that's just the way I have to do it, you know, like, I can't just come out of nowhere and say, oh, I'm a writer, I'm better than you guys. Like, it just doesn't work that way. I've got to fix this, too. Son of a bitch. Designing characters can be hard, guys. It can be hard. This is going to look really weird. But let's just fix this. Now, if I'm going to do a crotch line, I'm going to have to do it after I'm done doing this. There we go. I sort of have the line I want here. But no, I've been doing the Just a Ghost Story trailer... Uh, I just got done Jesse Gill's build. Uh, it turned out way really good. Like it's fucking amazing. Like I thought it was really cool. I was like, oh man, it moves. It moves. It was sort of like Frankenstein. I was like, it lives. <laughs> it lives. Oh man, I was so stoked when I got to move. I was like, oh, he's moving. He's moving. It's probably one of the sickest moments ever in my entire life. I was like, this is the raddest shit ever. He's fucking moving. I'm going to save really quick. Shit. This game is Betty number three. Oh, I guess it's number two. I just don't want to lose all this work since I've been working on it for so long. Hmm. I don't know how long this recording is going to be. But I'm going to start moving a little bit faster here just because I don't want this recording to be so long. I might have to edit some stuff out, which is okay, but I'd rather not have to do that. So here's, how, well, here's when learning comes in, into effect. So what I should have done is I should show you guys how to group too. Because if you guys are going to use Illustrator, things are going to look like this. Let's just start grouping things together. So I've grouped this together, hopefully. Yeah, I've grouped that together. But I haven't grouped these together. So what you want to do is to keep your workspace organized. You're going to want to start grouping stuff together. By just going Command or Control G. I have a Mac, so it's Command G. So click, 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 Command G. And that saves. It groups those together. So what I can do later as I can do this sort of stuff. Let me just group these together as well. So now I have all these pieces to the shirt. I have this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. Group that together. Boom, over here. 
it's made a sh it's made made this shirt as a group. If I want to edit it, I can open it up and go to every single layer individually. And then you can layer them the way you want them to be layered. With the shoe, it's going to be below the feet. Head's going to be oh, get out of here. Head's going to be above everything else. Never mind. It's going to be below the shirt because the shirt's keeping that line of her neck proper. Then I'm going to group all this hair together. Do 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 group that together and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to group these together and I'm going to make sure the hair is behind her head because if it's if it's in front it's going to start doing some learning problems so there now I've got the I've got the shirt head pants shoes and it's sort of getting itself together right now and I wanted to give Betty more of a more of like a preppy band geek type feel so I decided to make her a little bit uh uh, just a little tad fancy. So what I'm going to do here is when I design her, I'm going to make this go transparent. And after this video, I'm just going to do a quick, uh, a quick video of myself uh, and some of the uh, other redesigns. This might be a two-parter just to give me some time because I am working on the Jesse Ghost Story trailer, and I might just need some time to myself to do that. Hopefully, you guys will understand. But I really want to get that off the ground before I move in. Oh, I've done buggered it. Before I move into any other projects like the Toljomsky Island. I could do a trailer for it. Like, I'm not saying I'm not. I can do a trailer, but I gotta finish my first trailer that I worked on that I started first. Like, say I get the Jesse Ghost Story trailer done first and it's ready to go and perfect. Yeah, I'll start working on the Toljoma Oske Island trailer. It's probably just going to be Carter talking to you guys anyways. But if you guys want one, I can do that. And that's the best I can do. Uh, the only other voice actor I'm going to have to do anything for this is going to be Jesse Gill's voice actor. Which I haven't cast him yet, but I'm looking for somebody to play him. Let's just put it that way. Since I have this uh, done a certain way, I can do this. What this does here is it takes all the sharp edges off. And it creates this sort of thing here. Like if you guys want to see, just like watch, it does that, and it fixes the problem I have of having sharp out, sharp ends sticking out. But since I've built this shoe all the way around, and this is sort of flexing around that shape, I can do this. Like if I come in here, I can basically so oh no, it's put it in there. But see, it works that way. Uh, I might have to make her shoe a little bit like a little bit more like this. Oops. There we go. Oh, no, not done yet. But yes, once I'm done with the Jesse Ghost Story trailer, I will move on to the Toldrama Skate Allen trailer. Unless I get a deal going for the Jesse Ghost Story, then I will move into that as well. But like I said, I don't know if that's even going to happen. So what I'm going to do for this, Control c Control v paste it in place, move it down, and I'm just going to take this one behind it, and I'm going to go to my grab tool, then I'm just going to move it over here. Why have you forsaken me? There we go. There, we're almost done. But no, the Jesse Ghost Story trailer comes first and then everything else because that's how this is going to have to operate. Or it's, that's how it's going to have to work. Because I really want to get Toadrumsky Island off the ground, but I need to get some cred behind my name before I can even attempt that. Now, since I did Zoe's redesign, I figured out a new way of doing this. The hands. It's probably the cleanest way I can do it. I don't know. I haven't thought of it earlier. I probably did. I just sort of didn't like the way it looked. But now I do. It looks way better. And I'm stupid. I should have done it the whole way this time from the beginning. Okay. Okay, this is on the outside. So I'm going to have to make this on the inside. Inside stroke? Ooh. Now I can just do this. Stop it. Grab the whole hand. There we go. Fixes that problem. So, and what we're going to do is we're just going to take our, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that in later. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this. I'm going to click. And I gave her Gwen type hands. Oh god, okay, that's what the problem is. It's not registering that properly. 
Whoops, that's fine. Let's get a button those. There we go. Fine with that. Now I kind of have to do this a special way. This is gonna have to go all the way down here, just so it's out of the just so these sharp ends are out of the way here. There we go. I'm probably gonna do this too. Uh, this is probably a better way of doing this. Okay, these need to be uh, one stroke. These hands might not look right, but I will fix them if they don't. And they don't. Perfect. Time to edit. These hands look kajiggered. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was gonna do this hand for both of them. <laughs> Whoopsie! I'm derping it up today. There we go. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's get it on. Sorry, guys. I'm getting quiet because I want to get this done faster. Okay, so I'm going to do something transparent, make it about 40, just so I can see past it, I'm going to go in here and do what I did to their hand, except I'm going to do it right this time. But no, I, I did Zoe's redesign, which I'm going to do uh, actual, like, in like, uh, video video, where I'm actually in it, I'm going to do a video right after this one. Hopefully it follows right up with this. It's just gonna be okay. Let's get rid of this. It's maybe outstroke. Let's just put it on the outside, just so we don't lose our hand shape. Oof! Never mind. <laughs> okay, that works. Let's maybe let's deepen this thumb. Working on Zoe's hands was a big thing I worked on. Like, I was having real problems with uh, the, with her hand, and I managed to get it just perfect. So I'm really confident with my hands now. No homo. Okay, so I want these hands to be level. So obviously this hand isn't level with the other one. So I'm just gonna take this. And just try and you know sink it right up with this thing. Whoops, it moved over just a smidge. Of them. I want to try and keep this line uniformly straight. There we go. And there we go. There's Betty. What I can do is if I don't like her, stro like the stroke outline of her. Uh, see, I got a problem here. See, this is the stuff I gotta look out for. It's not a big deal. I just got to do this. There we go. Finished. And this also lets the design know that this is, you know, a little bit sticking out from her waist a little bit. Let's go to the other side and do this now too. But, you know, doing a uh, Betty Cameron love thing would be cool. But you know, the, the redesign phase I did for Zoe took me quite a while to get her hair right. I knew everybody was going to complain about her hair. I still want to believe it, but you guys did. So I ended up fixing it. <laughs> but no, there's uh, I got to fix these glasses. Okay, so I'm just going to lock everything else. I'm going to lock her face, like the face there. Just so I can do some special editing here. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, I gotta lock her hair as well because it's underneath. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this. Start adjusting her glasses. The way they look. I think they look a little, I want them to look a little bit more square. Not so wrecked. I need to put this underneath. Just because I want these to be hidden by the frames. There we go. And this eye here, just a smidge I'm too weird looking. And I have a problem there I have to fix. Let's maybe have these a little bit more flat. Doesn't look like she's looking upwards. But let's give them a little bit more of a, a square looking feel. Let's also move this all in a little bit. Give me a moment here. Keep that right about there. Move this out. Move this down. Let's try moving this up a little bit. I gotta fix this. Give me one moment. I don't know, just doing her colors is gonna be weird. Like, I'm probably gonna end up changing her shoe color just because I don't like that color for her shoes. And let me just see here. Okay. Oh, let's crotch line. And also, I want to take these hands, and I'm just going to take both of them, group them into here, and there we go. Now the hands are with the shirt and everything, so I got the hands, hands and shirt, head, legs. Unlock these, group the shoes together, group them with that, and everything. Boom. Now let's do this crotch line. So I'm just going to do this. Because I'm not sure what I want this to be. So I'm just going to do this. I could do it like this. I think that makes a little bit more sense. Hmm. This hand's a little bit wider than the other one. Or this, this arm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock the hand because I don't want to edit the hand. I'm just going to take this, just do this. There we go. This guy I'm watching play this game is playing some wicked music. Okay, perfect. Just as want to make the arm a little bit more skinnier, so it matches this one a little bit. Probably needs a little bit more tweaking. I know how to do this though. Okay, this is going to be tricky. I have to do this very carefully. Ah, bugger. I got one note I didn't want in there. Hopefully that gets rid of it. Damn it. Just because she's a little bit off balance. There we go. And uh, with Betty, she doesn't have female lips like the other characters, like the other girls do. It's sort of uh, like Beth. I don't think Beth has lips. She just has a regular mouth like the guys do. So that's what I gave Betty as well. Because I didn't want to make her too pretty looking. I just got to edit some more things here just because I don't like the way they look. Just a smidgen of editing. Obviously I wanted to make Betty less feminine than the other girls. So she's a little bit under more underdeveloped than the rest of them are. Uh, she is the same age as most of them. I was going to go into some age complications with my cast, which I can go through really simple. It's going to be a certain set of characters are going to be the same age as the original cast. And if the original cast is, say, you know, 20 something right now, then my cast will be 20 something, or certain characters then will be. But characters like Matt and Isabella will, will remain the youngest competitors in Total Drum history. They will remain that. But. The main characters that I want to take further on 
are the same age as the original contestants. So if they're like 20 or 18, that's how old uh, some of my contestants are. And some of them will be 16 and so on. So it's sort of like a really big age mix in my cast. But anyways, that's just some information I want to give you guys. Here is uh, my new design for Betty. Uh, I can still redesign her a little bit better. This is just one that I came up really quick. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this sort of video. Uh, if uh, It seems like I came talking out of nowhere in some parts just because I ended up fast forwarding some parts to avoid uh, the video being like 40 minutes long. So thank you for guys for watching and I'll see you in real life in just a moment.